I'm Jake Bruton, and today we are in Columbia, Missouri at one of our infill houses, and I want to talk to you about why we have T-stud headers here, but we don't have T-stud headers on the floor above us. Let's do it now. Okay, so we have our wall assembly here. We have Huber's Zip R6, that's continuous insulation, air and water barrier on the outside of the house. And then we have T-stud framing. And we've used T-studs for our entire rough opening and our headers. And this is a first for us, and I'm not sure that this is our end-all method, but this is a method that we're trying because we're constantly trying to be better, constant trying to challenge ourselves to figure out what the best way to do things is. And so in this instance, let me walk you through what we have here and let me talk to you about the challenges that we've experienced here. Uh, so it should note that this is a gable end. This is technically not a load-bearing header uh, or not a needed load-bearing header, but this is a load-bearing header. Uh, you can order header assemblies from T-Stud. You'll have to check with them on what the span is. I do know everything on this house. Uh, it actually worked to use their headers if we needed to. And you can get those headers pre-filled with foam or you can get those headers naked like the rest of their T-Studs. They call it naked when it doesn't have foam or anything in it. So we have uh, a mated pair of a king and a jack that are offset in orientation. Uh, or, or two kings, I guess, is the best way to put it. So we have a king and then a jack. Uh, and then our studs underneath are T-studs as well. And our sill is a T-stud. Well, that offset T-stud means these guys are cut at two separate heights. One of them is an inch longer than the other. It means that you have to orient everything where the wide side of the T-stud sits on the wide side of the stud or the flange sits on the flange. So there's a lot of bearing questions that have to happen here. Uh, there is a lot of orienting boards in the correct direction that has to happen here. You really have to pay attention to how this is going together. And I'll tell you when uh, our salesperson with T-Stud walked me through this and sent me a video about it, I went, okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put one together and then I'm gonna film it for you where I point and ask questions and I'm gonna send it to you you can tell me if it's right. And because we have a close relationship with them, that happened, that unit is still downstairs, but when we're done framing here, that unit will go to our shop so that we have it for future reference. But everything is T-stud, so if you if you stick your hand in either side, you can get all the way to the back side of our zip sheathing. All of that will be filled with insulation. We have a high R value assembly here, but there were some pieces that had to be cut at separate lengths or different lengths on the same board. There's a lot of, well, which way does this board need to go in there? Uh, the benefit of doing it this way is we did have a flat surface here where we're able to block off that, that cavity with some zip R, and then that goes into our window install for our Anderson 100 series windows. But this is what we have on the entire main floor of the house. Now I wanna take you upstairs and show you what we've done on other projects that we did here so that we could have a conversation with our subcontractors about which way do we wanna do it. Let's do that now. Okay, so now we are on the second floor of the house, and you can see there aren't T-studs up here, but there are T-studs above and below. So what we have here is our kind of like modified method that our framers tend to like. And like I said, I'm not sure what the next house looks like, if it's this or the one downstairs, but what we have here is we have a single T-stud on each end with a full two by six jack, two by six, uh, header flanges, uh, a header, and then our two by six cripples here. Uh, and then we have a two by six cripple on each end underneath. The other studs in the middle down here are T-stud because why not? They don't have to mate with anything, but anywhere where we have the flat side of our T-stud mating with a framing member that needs a flat face on the other side, we went ahead and used a two by six. This is the method that we used at Hilltop House uh, this seems to be a lot easier for them to put together, but we take an energy ding here. We have a thermal bridge that's back into place. Yes, we have zipper on the outside that, that neutralizes most of that, but we do take a little bit of a hit there. Uh, we should also note that this one has a single jack. We have header hangers that you can see still need uh, um, fasteners in them. Uh, but everything here is a little more traditional, just capped on both sides and top and bottom with a T-stud. Uh, I think this is a, even if we were to go to the downstairs method on our houses moving forward, 
if the first time I was using T-studs, I would go with this method probably because it's a lot less, hmm, how do I cut that? How does it go together? Uh, and I think that this is, as Steve Basic always says, something has to be the worst part of the house. If this is the worst part of your house, you're building a pretty darn good house, and I think that you can be fairly confident that the house is gonna succeed either way. Um, choices, it's about having that constant conversation with your subcontractors. It's about figuring out what works for your crew and your climate with your clients and how that affects budget or timeline or even just process. If we were gonna try to uh, do this again or do the, do the method downstairs again, we probably would offer to go ahead and get all the, header, the headers pre-cut for the subs and all the sills pre-cut and then they can do some simple math to assemble the rest of it. But then our in-house carpentry team's involved. Here, they took care of this without us being here sort of thing. So it's a push-pull. It's a conversation. Thanks for watching the Build Show today. Don't forget to subscribe for the newsletter. There's two a week. It tells you all the videos. You're going to miss them if you don't subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on the Unbuild It podcast. That's Steve Basic, Peter Yost, and myself every Thursday talking about building, building science, the business of building, all things building, 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 building. Thanks for watching today. Have a good day.